I want to start by saying again and again, thank you. Thank you to all of you for your presence. Without you, this meeting cannot happen. Donc, merci à tous, merci d'être là. J'aimerais aussi, autant que le président de Step Women Congress, le chapitre du Canada, remercier tous nos donateurs. Encore une fois, je remercie Cogico, ServiceNow et tout le monde, les collaborateurs et les partenaires et les amis. Vous êtes tous très, très importants. Sans vous, cette journée n'aurait pas lieu. So again, we will mention the thanks and thanks all the time. Now I have this, uh, uh, I guess, goal uh, to start and continue this inspiration. We heard a lot from Eva, we heard from Mariev. Women in Japan should not happen again. Those meetings, yes, I'm looking forward to host and to do those meetings again and again around the world. But we should never have them. Hopefully in 10 years, we will not need the STEM conferences. We will not be extend this and that because we will actually achieve the equality. We will achieve the diversity. We will be renowned and recognized for what we do the best. Because as women, in collaboration and the help of men, we are superwomen. And that's what I want to talk about today. So if you allow me, after these things, I want to explain to you why I um, work hard or I actually put my hands on the hands of Eva and Chris to bring this Step Women Congress to Canada. Why? Because I was inspired by the value of this Congress brings and I had the chance myself to go to Barcelona and to see the energy that this type of event provides. What matters for me and for us today is that you leave this room inspired. Is that the little girls, my daughter Julia and her friends coming from the other school, get inspired. But then what I want you to do, I don't want you to need a paper or to need a coat. I want this to come from inside you. You need to have the fire, so actually you will be able to overcome challenges. Because to be a successful woman in STEM, there is a lot of challenges you will actually face. So you have to be courageous, you have to be brave, but you have to have your own estomac. Because there are challenges that will be on your chemin. Uh, without further ado, I, want, I was actually, uh, also invited to do a talk. Uh, I prepared this talk for this Congress. Um, so follow with me, and hopefully you will be inspired, because what inspires me, myself, is actually our grandmothers, is all those fabulous women that exist for several years, decades, maybe even thousands of years, right? And those women they will be talking about today, with our genes because we carry their DNA. So what I will be doing is I want to talk about the challenges women face in STEM, but specifically from a scientific perspective. As Darren said, um, uh, I have a PhD in oncology, but obviously before uh, holding my PhD, I went through a number of challenges. But they are not the only one. That's why I wanted to share it with you today. As per Nature Review, which is the most renewed uh, publication in the science, there is different challenges women face, not only in biology, but in all the STEM fields. First of them is what you see here is the research publication. There is only a few research publications where women are authors. And we should ask them a question, why? Because we play an important role in those publications and in those and, uh, experience done in the, in the labs. The second piece is citation rates. And fortunately, even today, in 2020, the number of research women carry that have been cited by other scientists is fewer than our counterpart men. The third big challenge we see in science, not only in biology again, in all fields of STEM, is that women have a lot of difficulties to receive funding for their research idea. Doesn't matter how bright, how brilliant they are, and they both make presentation 
show you this example. But this is the reality, and this is the publication from 2020. We are only in 2024. This is still a survey on growing in major universities. So we will have the latest data, hopefully, next year or the year after. Now, I want to talk a little bit about me. I hate to do that, but like I said, we need to share stories, right? Me, I'm here, a little girl. I grew up between Algeria and the south of France. I have a lot of dreams. And when I was young, my grandfather died from lung cancer. So I said to myself, I will dedicate my life, my research, my studies to fight cancer. Who do not have someone around you that suffers from cancer? I believe that all diseases are important, but this one is one of the most devastating because we never know that it's behind us or around us. So I promise to work hard and at least contribute a little bit through my career. And that's exactly what I did. I went to live in Paris. I was only 18 years. I did my master's degree in Pierre Marie Curie University, and there is a reason. She's one of my biggest inspirations. And after that, despite challenges, I didn't have a fellowship. I worked on the side, I worked on weekends, I worked overnight. So I want all of you to do that. We all be girls. Even us as women, we still need inspiration. We need to work hard. I'm not saying that I'm the example, but I am between one of them. And I was surrounded by brilliant girls doing the same as me. Working hard over the weekend to be able to pay that master's degree in one of the most expensive cities in the world. Uh, so you see me here with my old Macintosh. I think this was in 2001, some of them in 1997. So it's as old as a Macintosh uh, uh, laptop. <laughs> and then, of course, I think when we have that fire of changing things, I said, okay, I did enough research. I want to make this research about oncology to real life. I decided to join the pharmaceutical industry. I believe that there we actually develop most medicine. I did it dedicated several years of my life here in Canada, in the UK, and in France, trying again and again to discover new molecules to fight cancer. It's always about cancer, and that was my actually a driver. But all of this comes with, you know, challenges I said earlier. That's why it's really important, as I mentioned, you keep the inspiration, you keep the strength, and you stay, you stay debout, quel que soit les challenges que vous allez rencontrer dans la vie, pour faire réussir votre chemin sur la grande ligne de devenir une femme scientifique dans le domaine des stèles. Uh, and there is me uh, standing here in uh, our company, uh, Roche Pharmaceutical. At Roche Pharmaceutical, we dedicate all the effort as a scientist to fight cancer, all of them, from breast cancer to lung cancer. And uh, we welcome, actually, and we welcome students. So if any one of you here and today needs mentorship or needs internship, feel free to reach out and have a discussion uh, during the break. Now, if you allow me, I want and we want as a stand in Congress to use the last five minutes actually to pay the tribute to the women that inspires us all. I don't have enough time to go through all the hundreds and hundreds of women because they do exist. The ones we carry the DNA, the ones we carry the genetics are those women. So I will be talking about six women today. Uh, Pierre Marie Curie, Jean Cotel, et bien sûr Rosalie Franklin. I'm sure a number of you know them already. If you don't, um, why I want to talk about Rosalie Franklin? Because we have the honor to have kids coming from the high school. And all of you heard about chromosomes, all of you heard about DNA. But when we talk about uh, the double helix of DNA, the famous publication in Nature, and the Nobel Prize, we tend to all remember three great men: Dr. Watson, Dr. Crick, and your kids. But there is one woman there missing, and that woman is Rosalind Franklin. We called her the forgotten heroine, the feminist icon, the dark lady of the DNA. She is the dark lady of the DNA. Moi, je dis toujours, c'est le fantôme du ADN qui nous suit toujours. Parce que Rosalie Franklin, elle a été la première femme. She was the first woman who was able to see the double helix in the laboratory. Not the other females. Yes, they worked together, but she was the, work, the first one. 
and she was the one who did the image. And later, magazine gave her back the tribute and wanted to use this first meeting to give her back this tribute. So Rosalind Franklin unfortunately died from breast cancer, and she also uh, faced a number of issues in her time, so she wasn't recognized and she didn't receive the Nobel Prize. But we are all here recognizing her and remembering her. So she has each day, you mentioned her name, a new Nobel Prize. I wanted to touch base on different researchers. This is Jan Otto, another activist, another good woman. I'm sure some of you know her. Why I wanted to talk to her? Because she is different and she fought differently. She was a British woman living in the comfort of London. She decided to leave London to go to Africa. And in Africa, she spent her life looking at animals. And she decided the way, she decided to change the way we do science. I don't have scientists here. She said, la science, on la fait pas en écrivant, on la fait en la regardant, en analysant. Alors, elle est partie en Afrique, elle a observé les chimpanzés. Why is it important to talk about the chance? Because, you know, when we develop medicine, we do not use the humans to try them. We use those famous animals. And thanks to her, we were able to understand fast and early how animals behave and how we can take advantage of them to actually understand, help them to actually cure because they carry diseases and have us as a human to cure and to develop diseases. So I wanted to recognize her and her strength. And of course, uh, Marie Curie, I think everyone knows Marie Curie, but we also know Pierre and Marie Curie. Maybe there is a, a reason of why she has been the only woman and the first woman who received two Nobel Prize. One for chemistry and one in physics. She developed the PIF, the radium, and the pyrrhonium. So, on lui doit beaucoup à Marie Curie. Elle est derrière, bien sûr, la découverte de la radioactivité qui est utilisée malheureusement in the world, but also to cure a number of diseases, including cancer. So, I really, really want to give her tribute and do our work and the duty of the members today. And obviously, this is not my last slide, but one slide before, because we said it's Friday, and I want to invite you all, if you didn't see this movie, maybe you did, go and see it tonight, with your kids, with your friends, with your son, with everyone. Because what that movie does is it links to the public memory, the memory of those three women. Those three women faced different challenges. They were in America, they are women in color, and they were in the era of segregation. Despite that, they were working in La NASA, three of them. So we have the Rotier Vogel. Ça a été la première superviseur noire à la NASA. Elle était elle-même a computer programmer. She was strong, she was great, and she was a goalkeeper, but she has a lot of empathy. She didn't love herself, she loved the world that she managed, and she had to go through a number of challenges in the US. We have Catherine Robert Johnson. Alors, Catherine Robert Johnson, c'est grâce à elle qu'aujourd'hui, on a le verre d'aller sur la Lune. Parce qu'elle a fait le premier algorithme qui a permis aujourd'hui d'envoyer euh, nos satellites dans l'espace sans qu'il y ait des risques euh, inconnus. Et bien sûr, on a Mary Jackson. Mary Jackson, je pense qu'on voulait en parler aujourd'hui parce que ça a été une des premières mathématiciennes et c'était une personne qui a changé, qui a changé le poly science. And I think that's why she means an inspiration for me. Because black women at that time, they weren't allowed to be engineer, but she fought to be the first black engineer where black people weren't allowed even to go to universities. So those women, think about it. The gene they carry, we carry it in our body. Doesn't matter from where we came. Doesn't matter from which religion we have. Doesn't matter which language we speak. On a tous la de ces femmes. Et donc c'est très très important qu'on reste debout et qu'on travaille ensemble et réussir. Maintenant je vais finir pour dire que il y a encore des challenges. Donc on compte sur vous tous que vous partez aujourd'hui en vous disant on va travailler fort pour réussir, mais on va aider tout le monde pour qu'il n'y ait plus de discussions sur les stéréotypes. Thank you so much.